Chapter 27 The Yelchers stopped, raised their weapons as though to blast at the voice. They restrained themselves, however, and then continued on their way. I would sincerely advise against that action, suggested the voice imperiously. The predators ignored him, heading for the door. Noguchi, warn them, they must stop or they will be sorry. I don't think these folks have that particular word in their vocabulary, Evanston. You know, darling, you never even gave us the time to talk. I could have explained a great deal, and we could have had an even more mutually beneficial alliance. Gee, you know, that might have been a real possibility, if you hadn't blown up my partner and tried to kill me. That wasn't me. That was my security system, which you should have known would be in place and programmed to take defensive measures. Evanston's voice reeked with self-righteousness. I don't think, you lying monster, we would have much to talk about anyway. You may have made too many assumptions about my program, Machiko. It is for the best interests of humanity. You want to stop us from achieving our destiny? If it's doing something stupid and dangerous and plain insane like what you're doing in there, then yes. You are a traitor. Okay, so arrest me. Lynch me. Whatever you want, Evanston. But first, you have to get through my friends here. The predators were already pounding and blasting at the entrance doors to the secret lab. As they worked, a green mist began to plume from the doors, folding in upon them and through the chamber. Laughter drifted and echoed down from the speakers. You're a fool, Noguchi. You'll soon be surrounded by the well-trained security forces you managed to divert. What do you hope to accomplish? Destroy this abomination. Well, haven't we become the torch-bearing villager approaching the castle of Frankenstein? Perhaps if you'd attempted this a month ago, you might have had more success. Unfortunately for you, what you saw in the lab is only the process. The sound of gears. The sound of doors opening. We've had plenty of excellent results. The sound of boots clopping towards them from the other side of the chamber. Figures moved through the mist. Emerged. Machiko gasped. Oh dear, said Attila, peering out of his little hammock. May I introduce you to our new warriors, said the voice of Livermore Evanston. We have twenty up and online. I think they'll do very nicely. Aren't they stunning? They'll do humanity proud. A clank, a creak of chitin and armour and equipment, the familiar, stomach-wrenching smell of acid. And now we shall deal with invading vermin, eh? said Evanston. The new arrivals attacked. There was a booming of speakers and voices inside, but Ned Sanchez couldn't make out much from where he and Dick Daniels were entrenched behind a permacrete outbuilding, guarding the flanks of the operation. They're not coming in, said Daniels. The bastards are just forming up out there, waiting for something. There had been a few who'd rushed in, but Sanchez and Daniels had toted them properly, and they'd scurried back to douse their tails in buckets of water or whatever. Otherwise, they weren't doing anything. They're not shelling because they don't want to hurt the building, if they can avoid it. Or what's in the building. I don't like the looks of it. We should be in there and out by now. It's going to take a lot to get through those guys. We got in because we got some pretty fierce fighters on our side. Take my word for it. Machiko knows her stuff. She was one of the survivors on Ryushi. I just hope that's not the case here, said Daniels. What, you want to have your cake and eat it? You bet. Me too. There was some sort of commotion within. A seepage of mist. Something sure as hell stinks in there, said Daniels. He made a face. Literally. Yeah. Sanchez glanced uneasily towards the security forces, hunkered behind their vehicles. Look, you better get your butt in there and see what the hell is going on, said Daniels. I'll keep the army guessing. Another clatter. The sounds of blasting from within. Yeah, right. Thanks. Sanchez patted his fellow on the arm and then made a quick dash for the opening of the building. 
no one shot at him. As he entered, he immediately felt a raw blast of intuition. Something was very wrong. He saw first Machiko Noguchi, standing tall with a somewhat cowed expression on her face. The face dangling below her, Attila's, appeared equally upset. He turned in the direction of what they were facing and saw the problem immediately. Jesus, he said. Though there was absolutely nothing holy about what he was looking at. Exactly, spat Machiko. A trapdoor had opened in her chest and her heart had fallen through. We've got more than we bargained for, I think, said Attila. I just hope your boys are as good as you say. What they had witnessed growing in that bubbling nutrient tank only hinted at the true monstrosities that glowered over them now, outfitted fully for killing and destruction. They were the buggers. Bigger than normal bugs, they towered over the predators, armoured and outfitted with cyborg exoskeletons and extensions, with several arms, all holding weapons of various kinds, from blasters to spears and knives. Nor were they all identical. Some leaned more toward queenhood, drool dripping down from their razor-sharp fangs, claws curiously tangled with weapons in awkward grips. Some looked almost exactly like normal hard meat, from claws to shells to fang-ended head tubings. However, metallic extensions wrapped around these, focusing oculars. These bugs could see. All, however, moved stiffly, without the fluidity of their counterparts. These were not tested models, Machiko realised. These were creatures that had just been put on duty today, and hastily at that. This was their first testing, and that was their one hope. With this realisation, Machiko called out to Bakub. The predator immediately began to strike back towards them. Machiko communicated her perceptions quickly to Attila. Tell him, tell him there's hope, but his people must fight quickly and agilely. Attila did so immediately and fluidly, also adding his own particular strategic insights. The predator traipsed back to his crew, speaking rapidly and gesturing. The group split up. Thank you, Evanston, cried out Machiko Noguchi. We don't have to go in there to destroy them now. She lifted her blaster and fired at the closest one. It was a good shot. She hadn't fired to kill. She had a good angle on what appeared to be an opening an uncovered portion of the frontmost monster's leg. The blast caught the thing in the knee joint. It emitted a high-pitched squawking and tumbled in the path of the others in a squabble of limbs and armour. Like formation fighters, the predators split and began to attack. The monsters seemed taken by surprise at the fall of the foremost. Nonetheless, they aimed their guns and began to fire as well. A predator was caught full in the chest and bashed across a table like a toy, crashing out of sight. However, a moment later, it popped back up like a burned jack-in-the-box and charged again, firing at its adversary. The buggers were more impressive physically than kinetically. However, they were not without power and cunning in battle. Nonetheless, there was a feeling of inexperience and confusion to their monstrous visages, attentiveness to their movements. And why not? They were, after all, fresh out of the vat, so to speak, armed with artificial memory and directed from afar. The hunter in Machiko sensed this. She intuited that the predators sensed this as well. She could see hand motions and clipped commands. Clumps of them broke apart, reformed differently. The fallen bugger rolled away and the others hurled past, eager to tear apart their prey. They were met with cross blasts from unexpected angles. For a moment their ranks held, but then, when two of their numbers literally blew up under the blaster onslaught, they retreated. These close quarters were not what they were programmed to fight in, and whoever was commanding them wasn't doing the proper job. Nonetheless, it was a bloody, nasty melee. Inexperienced though they might be, the buggers were still fighting machines, and they fought with a fearsome coldness that held the worst and the deadliest of both races. Nonetheless, the predators were fighting machines as well, and fighting machines that now, in a contest not just for honour, but for survival, fought with a single will, an absolutely incandescent genius. Machiko had never seen the like, nor, apparently, had Ned Sanchez. He stood there, gawking. Get down, ordered Machiko, 
taking her own advice and parking herself behind a high backed lab table. Shouldn't we help? We'll just get ourselves killed now. Anyway, Sanchez would. She'd run with a pack before and could probably meld her instincts into the group mix. Sanchez couldn't. He would probably get caught in the bar's saw of action and get ripped to pieces. He got down as well, though he peered out at the action with great interest. My god, I've never seen anything like this. Talk about berserkers. The predators were fighting with a grace and precision that bordered on ballet. They somehow knew just the right moments to dodge, just the right moments to fire, just the right moments to advance. They were defeating the enemy, an enemy programmed only for victory. Evanston bungled this project, said Machiko. He didn't realise how stupid the bugs are, and that's programmed into these creatures as well. What? You're saying they were no threat? said Sanchez. That we're doing this for nothing? Oh no, he could certainly make refinements, I'm sure. Nonetheless, fearsome and nasty as they are, they don't have the thousands of years of practice that the Yautja have. Would someone please tell me what's happening? said Attila. We're winning, said Machiko, as far as I can tell. From the looks of things, there were five of the twenty hybrids down, and only a couple of predators. The buggers were backing up towards the exit they had come from. This retreat could not have come from their genetic programming. Retreat was a human notion. Evanston must be backing them away, hoping to reform. And then, something odd happened. Damn it, said Evanston. Sweat was dripping from his brow. Frantically, he engaged override programs for the team of Xenos he'd sent in to kill the Marauders. They had to retreat, reform, and then attack again. They would defeat these bastards. They had to. The computer had predicted a 95% probability of victory for just these conditions. He was going to have to run strategy variations, and then... A blue arc of electricity snapped from the panel. Static power frizzled through his hair, making it stand on end. The screens blackened out for a moment, and then zapped back to normal. What they showed on the screen, though, wasn't normal. His creatures were moving of their own volition. Those that remained operational were not merely retreating, but scattering in all directions at a speed that he had not anticipated. Evanston hit the control override button. There was no response. The control signals had shorted out. This was all happening too soon. There had been inadequate preparation time, damn it. The things were free. He snapped on the troop radio comlink. Zorski! Yes, sir. Red alert. There's a problem here at Central. I've lost control of the creatures. Which creatures, sir? The bugs? Those hunter things? You want to settle down and stop shouting? No, Zorski, the goddamn project! I've lost control of the project! That's just peachy keen. We've no choice. We're going to have to abort. Destroy everything. Get away from the lab. I'll give you 30 seconds. Then I'm going to blow the whole thing, said Evanston. Yes, sir, said Zorski. Livermore Evanston knew exactly what his creatures would do. Rampage and destroy. Indiscriminately. At this point, Livermore Evanston realised he had little reason to feel as confident as he had about the future of this project. He'd have to scrap it and start over. Fortunately, he'd be able to eliminate a number of his problems with it. His fierce little smile returned as he groped for the keyboards and began to tap in the code for the program he would need.